If you're watching this video, it's probably because you want to learn some piece of math, and you don't want to take a class to do it. For the last two years, I've learned math exclusively through self-studying. So in this video, my goal is to share with you some of the strategies that have worked best for me. Here's what we'll cover. Some of these points, like LaTeX, are specific to mathematics. Others, like the philosophy of self-study, generalize in more disciplines than just math. At the end, I'll give you an example of how I organized one of the courses that I self-studied. Before talking about anything else, we need to discuss the mindset that you need with the self-study. The primary difference between a regular class and a self-study is that in a class, there are built-in incentives to keep you working. In a self-study, the only motivation comes from you. And later in the video, we'll talk about how a schedule can help augment your motivation. But for now, one of the most important parts of a self-study is your why. Your reason why you are doing this self-study. And a strong why is framed in terms of your personal goals. So if we look at these weaker reasons why, you'll see that they're all external. You need to get a good grade. Okay, but what does that grade mean for you? If you want to turn this reason into a strong why, find a reason that getting a good grade will positively impact your life. Tie it to something that you specifically care about. Someone told me to learn this is working for the person who told you to learn it, but again, you need to find a reason why you specifically want to learn this subject, why you almost need to learn it. The desire should be burning in you. You'll need this strong reason, because in a self-study, especially in math, you will face challenges. Math is a hard subject. You may feel like quitting, but your strong reason why will sustain you. It won't be to impress some other person. It'll be in terms of your personal goals, that's why you needed this personal why. Math is quite rewarding, and you are about to embark on a very exciting journey. Now let's talk about the philosophy of self-study. One of the primary things you can do with a self-study that you can't always do in a more typical class is you can implement mastery-based learning. This means going at your own pace, because there's no set pace that you need to conform to. What that means is don't move on to a new topic until you've mastered everything before it. This will help you not run into a wall where the new material isn't actually what you're having trouble understanding, it's gaps in your previous understanding that's holding you back. Mastery-based learning helps overcome this because there should be no gaps. One exception is if a topic seems almost too abstract to understand on its own and what you really need to do is just go forward and look at how it's used in the next few pages of the textbook or as problems get more complex. If you go forward just a little bit to see how something is used, that can help you understand it. But just keep in mind that you do have this gap and keep that in your head so that you know to eventually circle back to it. Your goal with the self-study should be to gain a very strong understanding of the material. This is another reason it's important that your why is tied to something that you care about. Your goal is not to get a grade, which is external. It's to come away from the course knowing more. And this brings us to a very important point. In math, the only way to truly learn is to do problems. Reading, of course, is necessary, but don't be fooled into thinking that you can learn math and not do the exercises. Specifically, sometimes you'll see a problem after just reading a section of a textbook and you'll think, oh, of course I know how to do this, because you recognize some concept that you just learned about. You can even sketch a solution in your mind. Oftentimes, however, if you sit down to do the problem, really write it out in full, there will be some tangle that you hadn't anticipated, and working your way through this tangle will give you a deeper understanding. So I would recommend that you solve problems fully. You can do this on paper or typed up, and we'll get more about how you can type solutions up with LaTeX later in the video. And a final point on the philosophy of self-study is that many problems, especially in math, 
will be hard. Do not give up. Remember that you do not need to be talented in order to do math. What you need is effort, exposure, and practice. I remember one time I had a problem in a self-study of math that took me two weeks just to comprehend what it was even asking at a deep enough level that then the next week I could spend solving it. So it took me three whole weeks to eventually work out this problem. Professional mathematicians doing research spend years banging their heads against a wall trying to solve some problems. Certain problems are unsolved in math, so do not give up in your self-study. When you do encounter these especially hairy problems, here are some techniques that might help you. Try to think as concretely as possible what you know, and then work forwards from there toward what you want to show. And a second strategy is try to convert what you're looking to prove backwards into easier statements. When this fails, simply take a break from the problem and return to it with a fresh perspective in a few hours or days. We've talked a lot about problems and practice, so now let's talk about how to read math. The most important thing to remember is that your math textbook is not a novel, so you'll need to spend much more time on each page. And you really want to try to digest the results. Whenever you see a new theorem, try testing specific cases. So think about a specific number if they have variables, or think about a specific function. Just try to be very concrete so that you can take this abstract idea and understand how it applies, and that'll give you a better sense for the more abstract setting. Whenever you see a new definition, try to think of examples so that you can see how this definition acts. Always try to develop visual intuition, which means try to think about how you can make a mental model in your head for the symbols on the page. Another technique when reading a math textbook is to try to anticipate what the author is going to say. A great way to do this is whenever you come across a new theorem, try your hand at proving it before you look at the book's version. Then you can use the book's proof to check your work. You should think of it as something of a hardcore mode for your textbook, but if you manage to prove the major theorems that the book is giving on your own, you will gain a deeper understanding. Once you've read a section and done the problems, you'll want to know whether you've absorbed it well, whether you understand it. So one way to check your understanding is called the Feynman Technique. And in short, this is to teach the concept in your own words as simply as possible. The recipient does not matter. You can teach to a teddy bear, a rubber ducky, a recording camera to make videos. The key is that you're trying to explain this simply. So wherever you feel yourself having to fall back to the convoluted definitions that might not be in your head quite with a deep understanding yet, wherever you stumble, this becomes your study guide. This is where you can go back, do more problems, read different perspectives, same textbook, anything. One reason I started to make my own videos was exactly this. I thought of it as a Feynman technique for testing and building my own understanding. Another great way to test your understanding and even to learn more is to program something that uses what you've just learned. And this is assuming, of course, that you know how to program computers, which is by no means a prerequisite to learning math. If you don't know how to program, you can safely skip this section. I really got interested in math after I needed to use it in order to program things. The image that you see here is just an example of one of these. It's a program I made that simulates ripples on a lake, and this applies the wave equation from physics, as well as some cool concepts from differential equations in math. And I've listed some other things that I've done as ideas for potential things you could do as well. Now we come to something that is not technically required in order to learn math, but I would highly recommend learning it and beginning to use it. It's called LaTeX or LaTeX or LaTeX. No one's really sure how to pronounce it. And LaTeX lets you type math. LaTeX is required knowledge in most advanced math courses simply because it is useful. And it's also used throughout the sciences to format papers. One reason that LaTeX is so important to learn 
is that it helps when we're solving problems in full. And this is the difference between sketching a solution in our minds and writing a real detailed proof, is that when you type out your solution to a math problem in LaTeX, and this has happened to me many times, I've thought that I had it fully solved, but when I had to actually type it out in English and write the code for all the math, it got me thinking that there was actually a gap in my logic. So LaTeX is incredibly useful and you will see it in all university math courses and maybe even other science courses. And the best part is that it is very straightforward to learn. I have an example piece of LaTeX code. So the int means integral and then the underscore is getting you a subscript and the caret is getting you the superscript and you can see how it generates good looking computer math. This is how computer math is generated. Now you can download LaTeX onto your computer so you can render it locally, or you can use a number of websites that allow you to type LaTeX online. One that I use is called overleaf.com. Now we move to a very important topic. So you're doing a self-study, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do this alone. If you are fortunate enough to know someone or be able to get in contact with someone who would be willing to meet with you on a regular basis just to talk about what you're learning, this could be very valuable. When I was doing my self-studies, I met weekly with a knowledgeable friend. Every week I would do the homework for the course and I would discuss how to improve my solutions with him. And I would also talk about what I had learned for that week. And we would try to develop visual intuition, discuss examples, think of specific cases. This is especially helpful when you're stuck because banging your head for hours and hours isn't going to be helpful. But oftentimes just talking with another person is a really good simulation of the Feynman technique and it helps you figure out what you're missing and then the other person who hopefully knows something about the subject can swoop in and help correct your mistake or help you figure out what you need to learn in order to fill in this gap. If you are not able to do this, there are still other ways like Math Stack Exchange that you can use online forums to help you when you're stuck. But I find that it doesn't even have to be a tutor. Even if it's someone to talk with that has some knowledge of what you're trying to learn, it's incredibly valuable. Having someone to meet regularly with is a great way to stay accountable, but whether or not you have someone like this, a schedule is critical for your self-study. Because a class is going to have a teacher and a schedule, but with a self-study, there's no schedule built in. You're just doing this on your own time. But it's critical to maintain your motivation to know that you're going to get somewhere at a certain time. And furthermore, it's often very hard to think, okay, I need to learn calculus in the next two months. Where are you even gonna start? But if at the very beginning, you break up the course into weeks and each week has a homework assignment and each week has reading, all of a sudden, learning calculus has become eight simpler components and you can do each of those components. It's important to remember that even once you set a schedule, it is fine to take extra time if you find that you need another week to digest a particularly tricky concept. Your self-study is mastery-based. One thing you can do is to create a syllabus for your self-study with these weekly readings and problems, like I was saying. Not only will the syllabus help keep you accountable and break down your large goal of doing a self-study into more manageable weekly components, but it would also make it easier to eventually get credit for your self-study, if that's something you're interested in. And regular study habits that are promoted by having a syllabus that lays this all out, they are the best kind of study habits, especially when the motivation is coming from you. Doing your self-study regularly will help make sure that you aren't falling behind. It'll help keep up your motivation. So here's the Google Drive folder that I use to organize everything related to my self-study of multivariable calculus from last year. My schedule was to do one problem set a week along with the assigned reading from a multivariable calculus course that's available online at MIT OpenCourseWare. So I was lucky that the schedule was built into the MIT OpenCourseWare website. They had already done that for me. I was meeting weekly with this knowledgeable friend and 
I created a folder for each problem set. The structure of each folder is this. On the left, there is the problem set itself, and this I was able to pull from MIT OpenCourseWare's website. Then two to the right is my first solution. So this is what I spent the week making. Then when I met, we went over the solutions and he gave me advice on where I might have skipped a step or where I might have made a calculation error. In short, he gave me comments. And then before moving on to the next week's homework, I implemented his advice to make a second version of my solutions that was now correct. Coming back up a level, this readme PDF was a document that I maintained that did two things. First, it explained what I was doing with my independent study. So it explained about how I would meet and then revise and then move on to the next week's homework. And it also kept track of when I completed the problem sets. So this was my way of recording how I was sticking to my schedule. And you can see in what I've circled here that on week nine, I actually spent two weeks on the problem set. And the reason I did that is that we were coming on a topic that I uh, didn't have enough preparation to really complete in one week. It was really two weeks worth of concepts. So I ended up doing a problem set from the previous single variable calculus course on the first week that would help prepare me for the second problem set in multivariable calculus. So I was able to take an extra week because self-studies are self-paced. In summary, we've gone over all these different things you should keep in mind when doing a self-study. From having a strong why to mastering concepts before you move on, working a lot of problems, not giving up when a math problem is hard. We've gone over how to read a textbook, going slowly and thinking about specific cases. The Feynman technique, which is to teach, to learn, and programming is a great way to show your understanding. LaTeX, which is how to type math, is another good method for making sure you don't have gaps in your proofs is to type them up. And having a tutor or even just a friend who knows about the math you're about to learn is a great way to both keep yourself accountable and to get unstuck. And a schedule is the ultimate way to keep accountable and to break your self-study up into more manageable components. And then we went over how I did this for my multivariable calculus self-study. So go forth. You want to learn some math, and now you have the strategies to do so. The most important thing I can say is to remember your why. This will be what sustains you throughout your self-study. It's a really strong reason that you simply must complete this. It's connected to your personal goals. And the other thing is that this video contains strategies that worked well for me, but you can make this self-study your own find techniques that work for you. I'll have specific videos for courses and resources that helped me learn them, multivariable calculus included, and these will contain textbooks, videos, uh, sources of practice for these specific courses, and you can find those later in the playlist. But for now, good luck, and I hope you enjoy your self-study.